everyone, welcome back to Cybersecurity TV. Uh, today we're going to discuss about the two-factor authentication. And there are several misconceptions and there are several types of uh, two-factor authentication that we have and, and people generally think like, you know, if they use two-factor, their account is secure. But it really matters that which two-factor you are using and how you are using and it's in which context you're using. So today we're going to uh, look into like, you know, uh, the types of 2FA, their pros and cons, and we'll also talk about which situation and which situation with 2FA you should use. And also as a pen tester or a security professional, how you should be testing this 2FA if you have a system to test and which has the 2FA as an option for the user. Uh, uh, one of the uh, like you know basic thing over the 2FA is it's a two-factor authentication, but there is also a multi-factor authentication which is called MFA. Now it's a bit similar because all 2FA can be MFA, but all MFA cannot be 2FA. What I meant is if you have more than uh, like you know two identities check in any of the application, then it qualifies. Of course, the multi-factor authentication there is more than one. And two-factor is mainly uh, determining who you are and what you have. Like, so there are two validation primarily needs to happen. So of course, uh, what you know is password. So you know the password. That means yes, you are the right person. And then what you have. So you have some sort of unique identity, either like you know one-time password or some security or biometric or, or something. Uh, specific to you, uh, what you have that ca counter as a second factor. Now, multi-factor is, of course, more than two factors. So you can have multiple of. Uh, sometimes I have seen, like you know, applications require their username as well as their, like you know, LDAP or Active Directory password. On top of that, it requires like a one-time password. So this is like example of the multi-factor authentication. So again, all 2FA can be MFA, but not all the MFA can be 2FA. Now, in this scenario, like design and the context are very important. So, when you are designing, so let's say you are a security professional and you have to you have to review the design or the architecture of the application which, which is building the 2FA, then you need to make sure you are account, accounting right threats and risk into consideration when you are giving any guidance to the dev or engineers uh, which 2FA they should go with. Because every 2FA has pros and cons, and you want to minimize the risk as much as possible. So, uh, like, you know, uh, for example, let's say uh, there is a two factor authentication for the SMS, and then there is again a two factor authentication uh, for the push notification. Now, not both the uh, both the techniques has the same advantage if you are trying to secure an application like an application sort of Gmail, when the user, if it exposed, it only allows access to that application. Versus if, let's say, that 2FA is used for uh, accessing the corporate intranet. Now, you cannot use the same 2FA to secure that corporate infrastructure because if that gets exposed, all of the corporate infrastructure intranet sites and all of the data which resides on the sites will get exposed. So you have to be very cognizant and, and, and very specific and, and try to like you know analyze all the threats and risk scenarios when you're designing the two factor authentication. So the first uh, first one we're gonna talk about is the SMS and everyone knows about like you know how it works. It's like a uh, um, you get a OTP when you sign up for example let's say in Google you, you provide your phone number and every time when you try to log in when you enter the correct password the second factor is going to be it's going to ask you for the one time password sent on the phone and then that uh, as you see here like you know you will receive the OTP once you validate the OTP and you are good to go now that's a very simple process and, and many things like you know okay this is very secure method because only we have the phone like a user would have the phone in possession and then they can only uh, see that code and like you know type into the application and get the access but no there are certain disadvantage of this as well sometimes uh, like you know this is not feasible or this is not like maybe uh, secure enough for the user to provide their phone numbers because what many sites do is they use this phone number 
for the marketing, right? So they used your phone number to send out the marketing messages and everything. And and this is the reason like some users are discouraged to offer this option because they don't want to share their phone numbers on their third party applications. And that's why their their accounts will be insecure because they don't opt for the two factor considering this is the only way they have. The other possible is the SIM attack. So uh, if you have heard of like you know SIM swapping, SIM hijacking, SIM attacking, SIM cloning, so these are several type of like you know SIM related attacks. There are so many tools out there. If you just Google it, you'll find so many tools that you can easily clone someone's SIM and then you know, like you know the OTP. You can of course like you know intercept the OTP. And then you can uh, use that OTP to kind of authenticate yourself. And also by by behavior, the text messages are always unencrypted. Like there is no encryption provided for the text messages. So if somebody is sniffing on the network, they can easily uh, read this uh, one-time password. So this is not a very secure application or a secure way to uh, provide the two-factor authentication based on this and on top of that there is another uh, possibility as well mobile malware so for example let's say you have an android device or you have any any mobile device which is jailbroken or you have the malicious application on it and and that way like you know you have the malware this there is one example i have given here which is oops yeah uh cerberus so that's one of the malware which was very popular, I guess, for the Android devices, which was installed on many, several user devices. And what it does is it intercepts any OTP and sends it to the attacker. So, again, so there are like you know several possibilities how this could go wrong. So I would highly recommend limit this particular option to maybe protect one of your site, like let's say, which is not very critical. I, I, I. Like, you know, from my perspective, email account is more critical than your bank account. So, of course, you can't use this technique for the email accounts. But, yeah, of course, uh, like, you know, any 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 other uh, third-party app where you think, okay, you not have that much private data stored into it, then you can offer this SMS. And, again, like, you know, there is another disadvantage. Like, if you don't, if you're not in the cellular network, then you won't be able to log into those sites. So, those are, like, uh, functional issues which we don't want to get into. But, yeah. Based on those analysis, I think like you know this is this should be our least preferred option to get into the uh, like you know to enable for any application. Uh, the next one, uh, the next type of the uh, two factor is the TOTP or you can say soft OTP. This is a time-based one-time password. And now how this usually works is uh, as you can see in the screen. One of the great example is the Google Authenticator. So. Once you log in uh, to, let's say, Gmail account, uh, you will uh, get an option to maybe choose a second factor as a, like, you know, a soft token or the Google Authenticator. When you hit that, you will present it with the QR code. As you can see here, uh, you take your mobile device, you download the Google Authenticator app, uh, you add a new device, and you scan the QR code. Now you have the OTP, which is like a time-based, uh, so it expires every 30 to 60 seconds based on configuration. And also, this OTP seed will remain on your mobile device. So, so what that means is you do not need cellular network. You do not need uh, any internet connectivity when you want to generate an OTP. So, every 60 seconds, gonna generate a new OTP. So, whenever you're gonna log in, you just type in that, and of course, you get into the site. So that sounds like a very secure, uh, secure way to kind of protect any critical assets, right? Uh, it, it's it's not it's not like you know that reliable uh, as you would think of course it's so reliable than the sms uh technique that we just talked about and the reason it's not reliable is because for example if, if you should not so let's say you are doing a design review of a, of an infrastructure which we just took the example of the corporate infrastructure where someone would allow to get in uh, like you know with the soft otp and they will have access to all the internet sites now, why this is not secure? Because when you are presented with the QR code, when the user is presented with the QR code, you are not sure as a as a as a like you know as a builder or as an engineer who are building this application, you are not sure that that QR code is only being consumed by the valid user. So only valid user is scanning that that QR code. 
the user might be scanning that QR code twice, like with the different phones. He can also keep a snapshot of it, and which is not recommended. But let's say if it does, then if somebody gets hold of that uh, QR code of that picture on the mobile phone, they can scan it, and then of course they can also have this OTP see it. So it's it's very like you know difficult to trust the users, and there is no way you can ensure that the user is you cannot enforce that user can only scan this once on their device where it's not jailbroken, it does not have any malicious applications, there is no way you can enforce that. Because this is purely like, you know, client side. When once presented, user can scan it with whatever it wants, can keep it for the later as well. So that's why it becomes very difficult to trust when you are giving access to the critical infrastructure with this particular uh, method so that that's the reason like you know this is this is very reliable like for example uh, let's say you are uh, you want to access your gmail account and if this gets compromised it's only going to get like you know access to your your gmail account but not everyone in your company but if we are using this for the intranet then if this gets compromised uh, the attacker will have access to all the data on the intranet so the third option is the push notification. Uh, as you can see in the screen, uh, this is like, you know, you must have seen this uh, if you're using the Duo Mobile or the Apple, and also Gmail uh, has also implemented that. So how it typically works is if you opt for this, it's gonna send you a push notification. So instead of sending a code onto your SMS or through Google Authenticator, it's gonna send you a push notification to ensure that, like, you know, so it's only going to go to your registered device. In the previous example, we saw that OTP could be on the different devices, multiple devices, but this one will only be on your device, so registered device. So when you got that pop, get that pop-up, uh, you either approve or deny. So one way it's good because it's kind of preventing users to install this or have this pop-up on multiple uh, devices. And it also helps to prevent phishing attack uh, because when sometimes you see this pop-up, it also tells you like, you know, from where the site is being accessed. So of course it's a very unusual location or something you can easily uh, easily ask them to disable it or you deny the, deny the um, fact to approve the access. Uh, the other problem that we have with this one is it's very non-standardized. So as you can see, there are only I guess few, yeah, few applications or few providers who support this uh, this uh, particular feature. So let's say if you have like you know 20, 30, and that's very normal uh, number of sites. So if you have 20, 30 applications where you have two factor and you want to go with the push notification for all of them from the centralized application like Google Authenticator, I can have like, you know, 10, 15 sites and I just use that for all the 2FA. Now that's not possible with the push notification. Uh, there are only very, like, you know, very less number of people supports this. And the secondly, there, there there's no standardization. So someone, sometimes you have to go to Gmail to like approve it. Sometimes you have to go to Duo. Sometimes it works with the Apple. So. There are like a different uh, different ways of implementing this, and and that's why it's not being normal. But I do see its benefit over the other methods. So hopefully in future, when we have a standardized uh, standardization across, uh, about this push notification, we'll have some uh, more uh, application building support for this particular feature. Okay. All right. So the last uh, type and from my understanding, the most secure one is the hard token. And when I say hard token, uh, you must have seen like, you know, uh, something like this. Uh, this is called a, a UB key. So how it typically works is, uh, you. Uh, this is uh, mostly a USB based universal, uh, this is called universal second factor. So this is a USB uh, small device which you plug in into your system. And then once you register with the site, uh, next time when you uh, when you go to the site and try to uh, like you know authenticate with the second factor, it's gonna uh, pop up. You touch the button or you uh, like you know uh, there, there is a button at the top or at the side. You touch it and it's gonna um, provide the second factor. You don't have to type any code or anything. You just touch the button. It's gonna uh, provide the key and then you authenticate to the site. Now, why this is uh, advantage than the or more secure than the other uh, all the methods that we saw? One thing. This is a truly a second factor because it says what you have, right? What you know is a password, the first factor. What you have 
is the actual thing, which is this. So if you don't have this UB key with you, you cannot get into the site. That's, that's of course, uh, one thing. Uh, the second thing is uh, it only works on the register side. So, for example, let's say uh, I register this on, on abc.com. So next time when I'll be on the abc.com, it says I'm registered here, so it's going to give the second factor. It's going to provide the code to the site, and I'll be logged in. But if somebody's trying to fish me and try to log into the, my bank.com, it's not going to give the second factor because I'm not registered with this UB key. So it, it certainly has um advantage, and uh, of course you can always control like you know the hard tokens because once, for example, if you are giving access to the critical infrastructure to the to your employees, then uh, this hard token becomes more and more important because the, only they like whoever the issued the hard token will only be able to work with that like you're able to get in and the other thing is it's only going to work on the registered devices so you if it's stolen or something of course it's useless because it's not going to work so the the risk or threat here is very very minimal that someone has to steal their device someone has to steal their ub key and they have to know which side they have to get in and if all of this uh, combined, like you know, attacker can gain, then yeah, then and only then they can have access to the. Of course, none of this method is foolproof. Like none of that secure that it would avoid the risk or or destroy the risk uh, fully. But uh, this minimizes the risk a lot. The other thing is uh, nowadays, like you know, uh, with this COVID-19 many companies are going work from home by implementing policies and so people are not on their network and when you're not on network of course you can have the virtual private network but on top of that uh, if you want to implement the second factor which i highly recommend uh, you i would consider this option if this is not possible then maybe go with the push notification if that's not possible go with the soft otp totp which is of course do not get confused with the soft OTP uh, with the uh, uh, this one I'm talking about. Do not get soft OTP confused with the OAuth. It's an open authentication, but not the OAuth. OAuth is something where you are on LinkedIn and it says log in with your Google account, right? But, so that's an OAuth. But well, this is a open authentication standard. So yeah, with many people and many companies are, are implementing work from home policies, and I'm sure it's going to be going to be continue for the next several months, and maybe it becomes a little bit of a usual thing in the future as well. So then we need a we need to find a more secure way to have give access to the authorized people, and uh, I feel like this is one of them. I understand like most of the other stuff are free, like the SMS and the Google Authenticator, all of them are free, but this is also a very minimal charge. The only disadvantage with this is poor mobile support. So for example, if you want to get into any of the site on your mobile, you may not be able to get in because there are several, like, you know, there are very minimal, uh, minimal UV keys or keys, physical hard token works with the, works with the Bluetooth. So. You have to have like a USB port to work with it, but I'm sure like we'll we'll get over that uh, situation in next year or so. But yeah, if you if you are only allowing users to get onto the critical infrastructure from the laptop, and laptop has a mobile, uh, sorry USB port, so doesn't matter. Like uh, this is the best option you can think for. So I highly advise, like you know, uh, a security professional that you go through the design, you understand the design, you understand the architecture, you understand the context where this is uh, going to be implemented, and you make the right decision based on the different types uh, we have we have seen here. And also, I would highly highly appreciate, like you know, if you can give me uh, your opinion, your comments, if you have gone through any of this situation, if you have seen any other attacks possible on any of this type of. Uh, Second factor uh, that, uh, that would be like you know uh, knowledge gain for me as well. So I hope you like this uh, video. Uh, hit the thumbs up button if you do, and uh, of course subscribe to my channel for more videos. And I'll see you guys next week. Thank you.